two travel nurses on break from assignment. Thank you for the next one. What can I get for you? I have two separate orders. Go ahead with the first. The first order, I want to get pumpkin munchkins if y'all have any love. On um, what? Pumpkin munchkins. Pumpkin? How many? Uh, I'll take like four. Four? Mm-hmm. All right. And then an apple cider donut. All right. And a cold brew pumpkin latte. Pumpkin cold brew? Yes, that. Five. I'll take a small. Okay. And that'll be all for the first order. All right, hold on. I feel like I'm echoing. Go ahead with your second order. What do you mean? Yeah, so I'll take a small apple cranberry Dunkin' refresher. And a small iced pumpkin chai latte. A pumpkin donut and an apple cider donut, please. A pumpkin donut and a what? Apple cider donut. Pumpkin, apple cider, a small ice chai? Yeah, small ice, uh, yeah, small ice ch uh, chai pumpkin latte. And ice chai pumpkin? Yes, please. Alright, and what was the other drink? The apple cranberry Dunkin' refresher. Small on that one also? Yes, ma'am. Anything else? No, ma'am. You pull around. Thank you. Thank you. Wonder if she uh, has figured out this is for a YouTube video yet? If not, she's gonna see all this stuff in my lap. She's gonna be like, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> well, she I'm pretty sure by now. She yeah. has figured it out? Yeah, by now. Pretty sure. You travel nurses in between assignments. With the stuff everywhere. Decided to talk to y'all about travel nursing and the. to try the. Dunkin' phone menu items because why not? And I'm still unprepared. <laughs> She's unprepared trying to get her stuff and life together. You no, know, her life is more together it's than mine. It's everywhere. You know you're a nurse when you carry an N95 in your car. Or you know you're a COVID nurse when you have an N95 in your car. True, true. But we vaccinated up in here because it's 2021. Fully vaccinated. Fully vaccinated in 2021. But what about this booster, though? I mean, when I'm when it's open to giving people in the South, because I don't know if anyone in the South has even have the booster yet. Mm, I don't think so. Only our good little president has the booster that I know of. Yeah, just, just the president, like I. The, the ex president got those antibody treatments before anyone else. Yeah, that's what I tell people like, um, you know, it's good stuff if everybody who's in government business yeah, cause they ain't gonna try to kill are people. running to get it. Yeah, because they're not going to try to kill people in the government. Mm. It yeah. has you like extra light and me extra dark. <laughs> I mean, technically, that's not <laughs> wrong. This looks have funny. You, have, you, have you seen me? It's okay. Have you seen me? You're Greek. Greek folks are tan. Oh well. Except for well, my, 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 my Greek family is from the mountains. They ain't, we don't have <laughs> sun up there. That's why. Okay. So let's. What so did, I got what? munchkins and apple cider or apple cider donut in cold brew. We're gonna turn this into also a uh, what do you uh, travel nurses drink? I am a travel eoners. And I'm a travel massage nurse. The travel e has got the pumpkin chai latte and the apple cranberry refresher. That was good, the cranberry one. Uh huh. And I got the apple cider donut and the pumpkin donut. I probably should have got like another drink just in case this one is awful. Because I don't eat pumpkin, but. I don't know. The Starbucks one I had was not bad yesterday. I had it cold. I tried it a few years ago and it was hot and it was awful. But the Starbucks, cold one, it was kind of okay. Starbucks is kind of bougie. Kind of. I use a gift card. It is bougie. Duncan is for the people who need caffeine who are on a budget. And save money. Yes. But it's still good. You get a lot. Like if you get a medium, it's big. Like because while well, that travel nurse pay is very enticing, 
those taxes though. Yes, and you want to save as much as you can unless you just want to blow out your checks, then that's another story. So she's the experienced one. She's done more travel assignments than I have. She's done two, I've done one. Still learning. Yeah, I've done two. I just renewed it one. The first one, mm-mm. I don't, can I say hell pit? That's what it felt like. I was ready to run sure. up out of there. And if she's saying the run up out somewhere, you best believe that's accurate. Run. All right, so I'm gonna take a sip of this pumpkin cold brew. I'm gonna try the apple cranberry refresher first. Kind of scared. Not bad. The apple cranberry refresher. I'm gonna give it a ten out of ten because I actually I would I would get this again. I might actually get it again. I would give it, I'll say an eight just because it's a lot of cinnamon in here. I mean, it's like fall. A lot. That's a how lot. you know it's fall. A lot. <laughs> I will say that um, the actual foam tastes better from Starbucks, but I feel like they give you it like a little bit more. I feel like the foam here tastes better than the Starbucks foam. I would get it again. I would add more vanilla to it though. Maybe that's what it needs more vanilla. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I've had the pumpkin cream combo from Dunkin'. I think that's why it's like it needs more vanilla. Alright, so we'll be trying it. So we're gonna try. Have you had the double? munchkins before? I've not had the munchkins before. So you could try one of mine. Okay, I'll try one of the munchkins. Yes, that'll be. We're gonna try one of the munchkins. This is one of the other fall menu items in Duncan. So, what I realized also, while traveling, have you had any nursing students or new grads you've had the precepts or what? No. So I think they don't give me any nursing students or anybody like that because in my contract they have to pay me more if they do it. Because there was other people at my last assignment and they kept getting students and new grads. And they was like, oh, um, have you trained a new grad yet? And I was like, no. And they said, why not? I was like, I guess because you have to pay extra for me to do that. And she was like, what? For real? And I was like, yeah. And she said, what company are you with? So I told her, she was like, oh, I need to talk to my recruiter. Because it was bad. Like, um, where I was, they were really short staff. They basically had nothing but new grads. But no, you know, older nurses to actually teach them. So they went to some of the travelers. But they never asked me or my roommate. Because you have to pay us more. And you know, we're already expensive. It's hot. <laughs> it's the sun. Honestly, sun's good though. The serotonin. The serotonin. I need the vitamin D. I need the vitamin D and the serotonin. So I have, I know you had some students at your job, but what about with traveling? With traveling, I didn't have a new grad, but they, gave, they did give me students. Oh, okay. They did give me students. I don't mind students. Like, I actually would tell them, whoever they're with, hey, I got this foley. You want to come see me pull it? Or do you want to pull it? Um, I wouldn't mind, you know, showing students how to do things or answer questions and stuff, but... I lose students. I was a new grad on the floor and I lost a student. I guess she just gave up because one minute I turn around, it's like, where'd she go? And everybody's like, oh, she left. I was like, oh, okay. I mean, that's how I am with students and new grads, but for some reason, they they managed, most of them, 9% managed to keep up with me, yeah. which I'm still surprised about. And I, I weren't in the um, ED. I was on a surgical trauma floor, so yeah, I'm busy, but I'm not as busy as her. So I don't know, I guess I was just moving too fast. You need better students. I guess. Don't come to the surgical trauma floor if you're not going to run it. Because we run up there. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is though, we like all the new grads now, they're all like, oh, I want to do travel nursing. I want to do travel nursing. I'm going to get mm -hmm. my year and go to travel nursing. And I'm like, get your experience. Get your two Please, years. Because you're not getting help. You're not. And there's going to be people mad that you're even there making the money you're making. One, the hospital has a whole nother budget for travel nurses. Two, it's a lot you have to deal with, such as like what I'm doing now. I'm hurrying up these low bugs. Jesus. 
I'm hurrying up within a few days to get like different stuff like titers drawn, drug tests, notary to prove that I am a citizen of this United States. Like it's so much stuff I get done within a short amount of time and find housing. Oh yeah. All this stuff you have to get done in such a short amount of time and they don't hold your hand. So get your experience for the first year. Even like with a year like I was two years in before I actually went on my assignment and I was glad because nobody held my hand and I was throughout I was thrown out there to the wolves. Yeah, you get on my assignment. you get one, maybe two days orientation. Yeah. Um I if you even get that. Because yeah. sometimes it's like come in, follow a nurse, not really. They be like, Oh, these are your patients. Let me know if you need help. Let me know if you need to find something, that kind of thing. It's not really an orientation. Mm -hmm. It's just like a person you can just say, hey, help me. I don't know what to do. Pretty much. So you need that, your good basic knowledge stuff. And you're not going to see everything in a year anyway. Because mm -mm. so, I'm still learning stuff as a traveler too. And typically as a traveler, I would say you probably get the sickest or the highest acuity. Definitely. And the most annoying like if you have a 80 something year old dementia patient they keep trying to get out of bed or fight or whatever you're probably going to get that patient and you might get two of them because everybody be like oh you're making money you can handle it these munchkins are good though are they? the munchkins are opposite of the elderly dementia patients oh they're not bad I will get these again They kind of say it's like the regulars almost like it's not overbearing the cinnamon. I think that's what gets me with the pumpkin. It's that extra, extra cinnamon. Have you seen the TikTok where it's like girls and their iced coffee? Mm -hmm. ASMR. It's this one guy, I forgot his name, but he kind of like imitates administrators mm -hmm. at um, so schools and he always gets a Starbucks cup and he like shakes the heck out of it. It's just ice in there. Maybe like a little bit of strawberry refresher, but he shakes it all the time. He holds like a um, Michael Kors bag. Mm -hmm. I love him. He's funny. So next drink for me is the pumpkin iced chai latte. I'm gonna eat another milkshake. Dang, I wish I had more than four. I don't need more than four. I haven't ate real food today. I like the pumpkin ice chai. Isn't I like just regular chai lattes. Mm -hmm. So a regular chai latte, I would say, is a ten out of ten. The pumpkin chai, the pumpkin makes it taste a little different. So I'm gonna give it a seven out of ten. But I, I feel like I'm gonna get it again. I would give the munchkins a nine out of ten. Just because they're not perfect. But they're good enough for me to eat. Like, I would get them again. I wonder if the fact that I haven't eaten anything has something to do with it, too. I mean, I worked out this morning, so I don't. I try not to eat anything before I work out. Me, too. Or a half a granola bar if I'm super hungry when I wake up. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I might um, get sick. What's something you wish that you knew before you started traveling? Mm, taxes. That's still tricky to me. Like, when I filed taxes this year, I went to North Carolina for my first assignment. When I tell you Alabama took all my money that I had in um, North Carolina and I ended up getting a refund of like $5, I just don't understand like it has to be another way like how does Alabama have access to my money that I made in North Carolina like how do you get that for Alabama I didn't work for you <laughs> Alabama takes too much of people's taxes so I feel like I need somebody to do my taxes that like works with travel nurses because I just I don't know I feel like that's not right did I get ripped off I don't know and apparently they, they, uh, this past weekend there was like a travel nurse convention in Vegas where they talked they, all, they had like accounts and stuff who worked with mm -hmm. travel nurses there and know. then I think um with companies they said like oh you need to get somebody who does taxes but like, they can't really answer your tax questions and I'm just like shouldn't it be somebody for everything I need within a travel company 
taxes for traveling and everything because you're basically an independent contractor, so like those taxes, right. those taxes. So I'm looking for somebody, but some um, travel nurses that have been traveling like forever, they say you're gonna pay a good penny for somebody who specializes in like travel nursing or I guess truck drivers. Yeah. I don't know. I'm like, dang, like how much? And then she said, oh, it could very well be over three hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars. That's too much. I will say that uh, I've been up in Tennessee mm -hmm. for a travel assignment, and Tennessee didn't take out anything taxes wise. Alabama is when you take out mm -hmm. all, all my taxes. And then the thing about it is, like, I saw, like, looking at my check stubs, like how it was t being taken. But I just feel like when you actually do your taxes for the whole year until like next year when you do taxes again, I feel like that's when it's just like bam, big amount of money. So I'm just like, I don't understand it and I need somebody to teach me. That's the apple cider? No, this is the, I think this is the pumpkin donut. Oh. There's a pumpkin donut that tastes like the munchkins just in a donut form, not in a donut ball. the apple cider. Okay, out of everything I tried, I can give this a 10 out of 10. The pumpkin donut? Yeah, 10 out of 10. And then this is the apple cider. I've been seeing those um apple cider donuts that's been in like stores. Mm -hmm. And I've been wanting to try them. They don't look like these though. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. I'm probably sure they're probably not as expensive even though really this is probably important. A right. dollar, I think the donut was. Mm -hmm. Oh lord, that was about to be a mess. But yeah, I like this right here. <laughs> kind of feels like a powdered donut though too. Well, the powdered donut with that. Well, the pumpkin tastes like that. Huh? So, like, it tastes like it should be powdered or glazed mm -hmm. more. That I can feel the powder on my lips and the house like sweet tasting. Mm -hmm. They did good with this one. Definitely fall still like powder donuts. <laughs> I would tell you what my next assignment is gonna be, but that's gonna be for a later video. Yeah. And she's gonna discuss okay. That's a um that's a tip too. Don't tell where you're at until your assignment is over. Mm-hmm. People are creepy. Stalkers is a real thing. Especially since like we're by ourselves. Like, I usually have a roommate I travel with. That's another tip. If you can get a roommate, do that. Cause like housing is expensive. When I was in Birmingham, my apartment was like three thousand dollars. Yeah, downtown. I was, yeah, I was by myself in Tennessee. I think Birmingham was a lot more expensive because housing wasn't like you didn't have a lot of options. But when I was in North Carolina, there were a lot of options. And literally, like, when me and my roommate split, we both paid, like, $800 a month. Yeah, okay, yeah. And it was an extended stay. Yeah, the apple cider donut, 10 out of 10. Yep, see? And then where I'm at now, I'm paying $2,000 and I think 400 for a two-bedroom, two-bath apartment downtown in the area that I'm at. So that's not bad at all. Because, you know, a lot of people pay like 3000 for a downtown of anywhere. And I don't have a roommate this time. So, I was like, mm. But also, like, just make sure your first check can cover your housing. Don't let it be your whole check. Mm -hmm. Then you can save some money. I stayed in Tennessee. I stayed at, it was an extended stay suite hotel. I prefer those like I prefer an extended stay or an apartment I know people say Airbnb for one they jack up the prices because when I was on Furnish Finder the same person was like hey we usually book our places through Airbnb but we just have the link on Furnish Finder I looked at that um link I said like, I already know it's gonna be high because I used a Airbnb for a house before and it was so high just to stay there for like three months so it ended up being double it was four thousand and something dollars i'm like i'm only there for a month doing a short contract there is no way i'm paying over 
three thousand for an apartment, uh, especially for one month. Oh, so I don't recommend Airbnb for traveling. It's, no. it's, it's such a rip off. Short stays, a group of people, like vacation, yeah, but like for a travel, I'm mm -mm. Airbnb is absolutely the last resort, and that's with the roommate. I'm by myself. Heck no. I'd rather pay a hotel nightly. But some hotels they will do like oh just pay like three hundred a week and you can, you know, just keep paying every week and that's cheaper than Airbnb. Like the the extended stay hotel I stayed at in Tennessee, it was fifty dollars a night, but I only have to pay stuff every two weeks. Mm-hmm. My place in North Carolina we pay it monthly. And they were used to travel nurses, so they, you know, were nice. They understood things. They were lenient, especially with night shift. So, they work with you well. Stay, stay my, away from Airbnb. Yeah, stay away from Airbnb. My PR and job is, like, mostly travelers and new grads now. Yeah. It's, so like, literally in Huddle. It's, like, all the travel nurses are talking about the travel assignments and, like, their contracts and their time cards and everything. Mm -hmm. Like, the new, and all the new grads are, like, looking at them. It's, like, oh, this is something I want to do. I'm, mm -hmm. like, get your experience. Get your two years before you Travel not for the week, though, either. If you cry a lot, don't do traveling. Or if you, you do cry a lot, you don't mind crying, you can do traveling. But... I think the, I think the new grads now, they see the... The money aspect of it mm -hmm. and they don't realize that oh wait i'm actually yeah. like on my own you, legit and on. you're gonna earn that money too like every dollar you're gonna earn that money because there are literally like people out there who are mad that you're making that much money and i'm not gonna lie like i used to think like hey we're doing the same job and you're getting paid this much money but then when i got to know different travelers and they would explain to me especially when i was a new grad we had a lot of travels all the time Cause our floor was really hard so it always stays short nobody like floating up there and the work is cool it's surgery and trauma like it's fun work but it's just a lot especially when you don't have enough people so they would explain to me how traveling works and stuff like that and i'm like okay yeah i see why you have to get paid the way you get paid just think about it like you're moving all the time you don't have any convenience of anything. You gotta find your way. You don't get help. You don't get orientation. Imagine being a new grad and they just throw you on the floor and you don't know like anything. When you go on a travel assignment, the only thing you should be even like worried about is Wait where are things, yeah, where things are. You shouldn't be worried about, oh my gosh, like if my patient is cold and what do I do? You shouldn't be worried about anything like that. Like does that, does that mean it's like, I may not know, where the supply room is, but I know ACLS protocol. Right, right. Yeah, you should only be asking like policy questions and minor stuff like finding things. Now granted, sometimes when you go on an assignment, it's things that are new. Like when I went on my second assignment, I've never, you know, had to really draw blood often because you know, med surge. But when COVID happened last year, we did have to draw some labs, but if we couldn't get them, then you know, phlebotomy will come. But at my second assignment, there's no phlebotomy team. You gotta figure it out. You gotta get it. Yeah, my first is, my assignment, phlebotomy did not exist. The nurses drew their own and it, it was a magnet hospital too. They just don't have it. COVID had nothing to do with it. They just didn't have a phlebotomy team. So you had to do it. And then I learned how to do different stuff for respiratory because they barely had any respiratory people. So you're gonna learn some stuff. You just gotta be comfortable. I finished, I finished mine. I didn't the finish. I have like, the it's, it's good, but I just can't drink it that fast. But it's done it though. Difference between an ER nurse and a med surge nurse. I check stuff in like two minutes. She takes her time. And I leave my stuff. That's why I can't even like get coffee before work. I don't understand like how people get coffee before work because literally like all of them come in with a full, like a venti cup. Half of it is like watered down by the time they get back to like don't waste the money and it's Starbucks. I ain't wasting uh, Starbucks. You only waste money if you get, if I'm gonna buy Starbucks, I'm gonna drink that whole thing. Yeah, the only thing I do fast at work is eat because 30 minutes where I don't know what's what's the 30 minute lunch break. I don't know. My last assignment, they got an hour. <laughs> well, no, they got my, my last assignment, you got 30 minutes. 
I never took an hour either. For mm -hmm. one, it didn't feel right. For two, like by. I guess for the people who, well, I guess it would make sense because my last time it was like their magnets teaching hospital so like there was like a big big campus so like people would like go outside and like take their lunch yeah. break so i guess it makes sense for that they went to sleep oh y'all go to sleep I, I saw one uh travel nurse who was in california apparently they have like a dedicated like little like sleep room for their mm -hmm. hour breaks in california they had couches big conference table but also that that hospital, all the floors ran a lot different situations. That's one of the good things about travel nursing. You just think to yourself, thank God I'm, I don't have to stay here. Either four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, 13 weeks, you're done. Yeah. And see, I just started doing a four week one. I'm used to like trying to do 13, but I think I'm like four better because a lot of contracts, they're trying to be slick now. They're adding like 48 hours a week for all these 13 week contracts. I did a 48 hour one for 13 weeks. But when I tell you my body was just like over it, the third month was really just like a whole struggle. I was literally just like going routine. I wasn't thinking. I didn't think unless I was at work. After work, I'm a zombie. So I would never do three months of overtime, but I'll do four weeks. And then if I get two weeks off in between, I might do another four week if I extend. But I'm not doing three in a row anymore. Yeah, my first assignment was 13 weeks and at like eight or ten i was like i'm ready to go somewhere else now right that's kind of how i feel like i haven't been at a hospital where i'm just like oh my gosh i want to stay here for six months because some people do that like my first assignment in north carolina was awful like, honestly i probably awful. would have they did ask me to extend my first assignment i probably would have extended if I didn't have to float all the time, but yeah. literally they floated everybody. Even in the ER. Mm -hmm. In the ER, they floated you. They floated staff in That the was ER. my first um, assignment. Because even with, like, managing seven patients at the same time, like, y'all are used to, like, doing stuff quick, mm -hmm. going to the next person. But, like, seven patients, that's the max I've ever taken. It's, it's a lot. I will say, I would take seven patients if I could just take care of them. But the chart and it's just what really puts you so far behind. But they say. floated me to the ED in places that kind of look like ICU. Take care of like holding patients, that kind of stuff. Which I didn't like going to the ED for that because I felt like I was in the way. Like I floated to the ED before at my home hospital. I felt like I was in the way. Because I had to ask where things are. And then they're trying to move real fast and do stuff. I'm just like, I don't like this. I like being able to work independent on my own and know what I'm doing. I don't feel like that in the ED. Mm -mm. And uh, lately at my my home hospital, we've had like 40 plus ICU holds mm -hmm. for four or five days. So uh, we have like 10 ICU float nurses come down. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting to see the difference between an ICU nurse and the ER nurse. They are. Yeah, I know my home hospital. I don't know about this week, but um, last week they had you know everywhere was full, so they would take like one to two nurses from the floor and send them down to the ED to take care of holds. And we had like you know new grads and stuff like that, so it's a good learning experience for them. So you know they'll get two nurses. I'm like it's crazy the fact that we had to hold all these people in the emergency room and in the surgical department because it's such a small hospital you don't have like you know surgeries all the time then they, then or they, emergency surgeries i said so. that i think at her home hospital they actually like like, like they have patients like down like the yeah. hallway yeah they had them in the hallway and they had in them chairs. in the in chairs yes in the chairs and then they had them in you know the surgical area but just you know as if it's a med surge floor. So See, just, nurses from the floor down there. To so take just care think of them. about it. You are admit the hospital, but your admission is in a chair. Yep. That's crazy. That's why I got mad at y'all with those crate challenges. <laughs> I was like, we are full. Y'all be here acting a fool. Yeah. I'm just sitting here I'm with fancy equipment that I can barely I'm use. I'm on my second drink. I'm almost done with my apple cranberry refresher. Girl, it's your like, bladder gonna be screaming. My kidneys are gonna love me though. 
Yeah, you are flushing them very well. But good thing you're not diabetic either. Cause all this sugar. Shoot, good thing both of us is not diabetic. Cause I definitely had my in my little. Well, I limit. didn't work out this morning, so I lost a bunch of sugar from working out. Yeah, I haven't worked out, so I probably won't today. To be honest, well, let me not say that. Go sure. for go for a hot go walk. There's a part right next to my house. I have no excuse. It's good here. Wait, wait, wait. Aren't you supposed to be going to get your hair done now? This up in the air. Because, like, it's 4 or 5.30. And that's me. That's you. You, you, know, you got, got, got the other assignment? Yeah. I still need to do CPUs. Oh, also, for travel nurses... You still have the CBLs you have to do as a staff nurse. Hello? You still have to do those for every travel okay. assignment. So 50 CBLs I had to do for my last assignment. The what? So for travel nursing, don't just stay with one recruiter at one travel nurse's company. Talk to multiple recruiters yeah. at multiple companies. Because some of these recruiters be trying to play folks with these low ball on the assignments. And so you can get the same position at the same hospital but for like two thousand dollars more and some have different access to certain hospitals too like my first company usually doesn't have contracts with vanderbilt but my i actually got like three companies my second company has basically almost everybody but mostly with california for some reason like san francisco like they're not even from like san francisco the company but san francisco they have a lot of contracts from there and then my third one, I haven't really looked for real, but it's just good to have options so you don't ever feel stuck like you have to pick a certain assignment just for the sake of having an assignment. Mm -hmm. So when I say like my recruiter, it could be several different people. All right, my first assignment, I specifically picked that company because they had that was the only company that staffed that hospital I wanted to be at, and so this next assignment I'm looking at, I was I was already talking to to a recruiter from this company, but they just happened to have sp special assignments at that specific hospital. If I go to my travel assignment, I see people complain about little things like that. I'm like, yeah, that is kind of funny though when you go to different places and they're complaining about stuff that's so minor from where you come from. Mm -hmm. Like one hospital I went to, they complained because they got five patients or five COVID patients. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, we get five COVID patients at home. Yeah, or yeah. if they got um, six med surge patients, I'm just like, I thought that was standard. Mm -hmm. But it's not for them, that's not standard. Five is their standard. So it's just weird sometimes. And like they would, on a month, they would like be overwhelmed with four patients, so I'm like, how are y'all yeah. overwhelmed with four? I would love four patients always. Oh, well, that's, that's like golden. I know. I'm like, how are y'all overwhelmed with four? You even have time and, to and like, like catch up charting. And like most of the, like, most of the times when I was in the ER, they wouldn't put me on like the trauma or the CCU, like their critical care areas and like that ER because that's for their staff. So it usually be like their ER holding. And so mm -hmm. one, they weren't used to like holding patients for more than two hours. So like managing stuff for those patients they were just like we don't like we can't do this i'm like even pre-covid we would hold people for at least a day yeah and so we would hold people for at least a day we would have five six seven patients in the er yeah. and we have to go back and forth between er icu and floor, like floor patients and they're just like overwhelmed with four stable floor holds that you literally do nothing to because like they hardly ordered any lab for meds on these folks and they're still overwhelmed with four i'm like how are yeah. you overwhelmed with four sometimes i think it's like they're thinking they're overwhelmed just because it's a body there like you may not have to do anything but just another thing is like when some staff complain about what's going on and they're like oh i need to start traveling so i had to tell some people in my last assignment like Y'all kind of got it good when it comes to patient ratios because, you know, some were looking at my hospital, my home hospital, and you can get seven patients there. So if you're complaining about five patients or six patients, you might get seven when you go someplace else. Mm -hmm. 
Honestly, I feel like honestly, I feel like if you can work in the hospitals that we're from, mm -hmm. you can. I feel like you can work anywhere because I feel like the like hospitals in other states work on manage on like less patient ratios, and so like their COVID ratios is what our normals are. Which, but also like we get at my home hospital when we would get travelers all the travelers would always come here and say like if you can work at my home hospital you can work anywhere it's kind of like sure. kind of like gradient lane if you can work there you can work anywhere my home hospitals are kind of the same <laughs> i don't know i kind of want to work at grady just like to see what the i feel like is. grady on the floor you should be fine but grady in the er is like nope yeah i want to see what the hype is Kinda. Grady on the floor is probably good. It's probably fine because you mm -hmm. know y'all y'all max when y'all hit max capacity. True. In the ER, there is no max capacity. You start putting people in the hallway and chairs in the lobby. And she keep trying to get me to go to the ED. Nope. Nope. I mean, it's fun. At some point, there's a roof. There is on no med surge. At some point, it's a roof. ED. There's mm -hmm. no roof. But we have, we'll have people just lying up outside the lobby. Yep, no. I, I saw a TED talk with someone who was stable, needed to be on oxygen, but they were, but they had COVID. So they had COVID patients in chairs outside, just lining the wall. Mm, mm, mm. But yeah. Because I don't want the COVID. I, I don't either. I don't, I, I, I don't I, care I, if it's going to be mild for me or I, better. I, 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 I got, I got old thing. people, I parents care. I still visit. And go back home too occasionally, so yeah, I, I can't get them sick. I just I don't want to be sick, period, either. Yeah, I don't want to be sick, but also I got old people around, so right, yeah, you gotta look out for others at some point. You gotta, you know, take care of others besides yourself. I'm pretty, do I'm, the greater good. I'm pretty sure the Bible says that too. Jesus said that, that's true, too. That's true. Oh, Lord. What, what, what is it like thy neighbor like your brother or something like that? Don't 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 come for me for that. Okay, I'm I'm Greek Orthodox, so like our Bible is like I don't understand half of it, so I'm so sorry. <laughs> but she's learning. At least she admits it instead of just saying no. This is right. I I, yeah. I really honestly don't know. It confuses me. It makes no sense to me. Yeah. I be trying, but it don't make no sense. All I know is to treat people. Respectfully. <laughs> That's about it. That's good thing. So I think I'm full of this. I'm full too. And I drank both of mine. Which I was surprised I actually drank both of them. Mm -hmm. She was thirsty. Uh, actually, I may have to have because I'm always thirsty. Mm -mm. Either that or I'm always dehydrated. And hopefully y'all enjoyed the Duncan Fall taste test along with the Travel Nurse content. Hopefully we'll have more Travel Nurse content. But uh, we, well, I don't know. We We're may, always busy. You know, and we live in two different cities. Yeah. Hopefully at some point we'll be on a travel assignment in the same city. Maybe. Right. Eventually. Because you're going to the state, right? Maybe. Hopefully. We'll see. Possibility. We we contemplating some things, we're weighing some options. Y'all yeah, see though. You'll see. You'll see. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe, subscribe button. Subscribe.